The following is a production of New Mexico State University. Hi, I'm Sandy, the Sand Hill Crane. Welcome to the Bosque del Apache National Wildlife Refuge, my winter home. <laughs> yep, I'm a snowbird. And just like many of you humans who spend your winters in the southern states and your summers up north, we sandhill cranes migrate too. We spend our summers in places like Montana and Idaho and Wyoming. In the summer, there's lots of food there worms and beetles and spiders. <laughs> mm -mm. So we nest, lay eggs, and start our family. Then in October, when bitter winters are about to set in, we gather up our youngins and start our 800-mile journey south. Somewhere between 15,000 and 20,000 of us spend our winters here in the Bosque del Apache. There's wild food like this chufa. There's corn and alfalfa here for us too. This valley has been a winter home for cranes like me for thousands of years. My ancestors were coming here when all this land was wild and unsettled. Did you know that before all the dams and canals were built, the Rio Grande was a wild, unruly river? The Spanish pioneers who settled along its banks called it El Rio Bravo del Norte, the wild river of the north. <laughs> yes, indeed. It was a wild one back in those days. In spring, when snow melted from the mountains up north, the river would fill with water until it overflowed its banks and flooded all the land along it. Then, in the summer, heavy rains would again fill the river to overflowing. Sometimes, the water was so forceful that the entire path of the river would change, creating ponds and marshes in the old river bed. Lush salt grass meadows grew in the floodplains next to the river. Shrubs like wolfberry and mesquite formed brushlands. And woodlands of cottonwood and willow grew up along the river. In the winter, there were sedges and other wild plants for us to eat. Mm -mm -mm. But the river's bounty attracted humans too. More than 700 years ago, Piro Indians lived here. They hunted and gathered natural foods, farmed the bottomlands, and lived in houses made of mud and stone. Occasionally, the Apache Indians who lived in the surrounding mountains camped here. In fact, Bosque del Apache means woods of the Apache. <laughs> yeah, life was good, but it wouldn't stay that way forever. More and more people settled along the river. Farms grew up, then towns, and bigger towns. Well, the river's habit of overflowing its banks and sometimes even changing course started to bother people. I guess from their point of view, it wasn't much fun having river mud in their houses after a flood or having the crops they just planted washed away. People wanted to be able to control the river so they could use the water around their homes or to irrigate their crops. So people built dams on the Rio Grande and dug ditches and canals to move the water along in an orderly fashion. That was great for people, but not so good for us cranes and for the other wildlife that depended on the wetlands. And the Rio Grande wasn't the only river to be tamed. All over North America, dams were built, marshes dried up, Chufa and millet and all the other good food that grew in the river wetlands started to disappear. When the food disappeared, the cranes started to disappear too. By 1940, 
there were very few of us Rocky Mountain Sandhill Cranes left, and only 17 who spent the winter here in the Bosque. Whew. This could have been a very, very sad story. In fact, maybe I wouldn't even have been here to tell it. But just when things were looking pretty bleak, some very smart humans took a long, careful look at the bosque and said, that's for the birds. Now that's for the birds. 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 In November 1939, President Roosevelt established the Bosque del Apache National Wildlife Refuge. It's part of a whole system of federal lands dedicated to wildlife conservation. While people couldn't make the dams go away, they figured out a way to use them to help us cranes and lots of other birds and animals too. Today, lands along the river are flooded to create marshlands, like the ones that the river used to make on its own. Now there's chufa, smartweed, millet, and bulrush, just like the old days. And the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service works with farmers to grow corn for us, too. These people really do a lot of work for us fine feathered friends. They manage the wildlife refuge to create wetlands, much like those that Mother Nature used to make when the river ran wild. Besides sandhill cranes, you'll see lots of other kinds of animals and birds here at the Bosque. There are homes for bald eagles and red-tailed hawks, turkeys, roadrunners, lizards and turtles, porcupine, coyotes and deer. All around the wildlife refuge, workers are carefully managing marshes, grasslands, thickets, and woodlands to provide food and homes for birds and animals, and places where people can enjoy them. For example, take a look at this shallow pond where all those ducks are dabbling for a delicious dinner. <laughs> those lucky ducks. Well, just last spring, that shallow pond look like this. Uh-huh, that's right, a farm field, plowed and dist and ready to grow. The nice people at the Bosque know just how to move water around so that us cranes and ducks and geese have just the right habitat. Habitat, now that's a word I learned from my scientist friends at the Bosque. It means the food, water, shelter, and space that we wild critters need. The people here at the Bosque are constantly opening and closing gates and ditches to move water from the river through the fields, marshes, and ponds, and back to the river. This management stuff is a lot of work, but then, <laughs> we're worth it. Besides managing wetlands for us, the people at the Bosque del Apache grow corn to help feed us cranes and geese over the winter. By midwinter, there are 50,000 snow geese here. Each goose eats about a half a pound of food a day. Each of us cranes eat about three quarters of a pound a day. To feed just us cranes and geese, the Bosque needs to provide about 40,000 pounds of food each day. Geese like to eat in wide open spaces where coyotes and other predators can't get too close. These are the fields where corn has been knocked down for them. Cranes like to keep an eye out for coyotes too. Knowing how to watch out for predators is one of the ways that we have survived all these years. The people at the Bosque knock down the corn stalks at just the right height for us. Did you know that cranes are among the oldest living bird species? We've been around for more than nine million years. We've outlived the dinosaurs. We were here before the Rocky Mountains were formed. Not only are we among the oldest birds, we're one of the biggest. Greater sand hills like me grow to be four feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> 
with our wings tip to tip, spanning six feet. Ha ha ha, bigger than you. Yet we weigh only between nine and 13 pounds. Why, you might have weighed almost that much when you were born. Another amazing thing about us cranes that maybe you didn't know, we're born dancers. We bow, we leap, we pirouette. <laughs> Take a look at this. We dance when we're excited, when we're frustrated, when we have extra energy to burn, and when we want to impress the girls. Bet some of you humans are like that, too. A lot of birds find partners and start raising families when they're a year old or even younger. But we cranes take a little longer to settle down. We wait until we're three to five years old to choose a partner. But when we do pair up, we pair up for life, sometimes 10 or 15 years. We have such a reputation for faithfulness to our partners that in Japan, our pictures are embroidered on traditional wedding kimonos to wish the bride and groom a long, happy life together. We only raise one or two young'uns each year, and we spend a lot of time caring for them while they're young. We have reason to be proud parents. Our chicks can walk when they're only a day old. In about 10 weeks, they can fly. Well, I guess I've been bragging. But how many of you youngins can fly and dance? You probably wonder how we spend our days here in the bosque. When you're getting up and getting ready to go to school, we're getting up and heading off for a full day of eating. We eat the corn planted for us. And we like the sedges that grow in the marshes, too. You can't see them, but tasty little morsels are connected to the roots of chufa. We use our bills like garden tools to drill down into the soil and find the chufa nodules. After we eat our fill, we head back out to the river about nightfall. While a lot of birds roost in trees, we prefer the water. We can keep a better eye out for danger there. So, yeah, we fly in and out each day. Since the people who work at the bosque knock down corn for us in different fields on different days, sometimes we find ourselves eating close to a road. And we can watch the humans. We appreciate what you do for us but you still make us a little nervous. You are, after all, a predator from way back. If you see one of us standing really alert like this, we're warning the others that danger might be close by. One by one, we go on the lookout. Warning, warning, warning. So be respectful. Don't try to scare us. And while I'm thinking about it, be kind to the other animals that you see here in the bosque. We don't mind if you watch us, but stay a little ways away and watch us quietly so you don't scare us. Be careful with your trash. It can be very dangerous for birds and animals. Hang on to your candy wrappers or soda cans and put them in their proper places when you leave the refuge. Learn about the animals that are here in the bosque. We all have interesting lives and perform some useful services. There's insect and rodent control, not to mention great entertainment value. So tell your friends about your trip to the Bosque del Apache. It's one of those special places, a part of our national refuge system, where your natural heritage is being safeguarded for you 
and those who come after you. I hope that you'll come back to see us again and again. With everyone's help, we Sandhill Cranes will be coming back here to our winter home again too, year after year after year. Bye-bye. The preceding was a production of New Mexico State University. The views and opinions in this program are those of the author and do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the NMSU Board of Regents.